There are some anime directors who are so well known and respected that you instantly know what to expect from one of their works. Miyazaki is known for family friendly adventures, Mamoru Hosoda for shows about the importance of family, and Makoto Shinkai for making amazing looking romance stories about growing up. And then of course my favorite, Imaishi, is known for over the top animation that is so absurd it is awesome. But then you get slightly more obscure and you will find the works of Masaki Yuasa, an anime director who is loved by pretty much everyone who has seen his works. Though I will admit I am not one of these people, while I do appreciate his works, I have found his recent movies not to be as great as everyone may say they are. Specifically, The Night is Short, Walk On Girl. Or, as it is known in Japanese, Yoro wa michikashi aru keyo otome. We're going to go with English for the rest of the review, by the way. The movie is about a guy and a girl and their misadventures throughout a night where she attempts to consume all the alcohol in a five mile radius and he attempts to get some pants. The whole movie feels like it is lacking any direction for the story to go, with the events that do propel the plot forward just seeming to kind of come out of nowhere because they needed to move the story to the next idea. One example is the main girl finding a flyer about a used book fair and then the next arc is her going there and trying to find the book that she loved as a child. Or the main guy having his pants and underwear stolen by some type of loan shark for reasons that weren't really explained so he finds the next part of the movie trying to find someone to give him some underwear. And then once he does get underwear and pants he has them ruined by kids running an ice cream cone into his crotch. Twice. And then the main guy almost got arrested when the kid says that said main guy was trying to molest the kid. Yeah, it's really nice that these characters had names. It makes things less confusing. So yeah, not making this up nor do I find it funny. In speaking of things that don't make any sense, how is a main girl able to drink so much and not be unconscious or dead? Then there is also the random singing scene involving that one other guy from Tatami, which was about as out of place as the songs in Star Mew. In fact, the whole guerrilla theater organization just doesn't make any sense at all. Not to mention the giant organization that's supposed to get people to return overdue library books. Though, now that I'm thinking about it, Maybe I'm just looking at this wrong. Maybe this isn't supposed to be a logical story, but one built upon just having fun and embracing the insanity, like Kill a Killer Twin Tales. Those shows are all about doing things that don't make sense, so maybe this movie is the same way. And as I started to think about it that way, I enjoyed the second half of the movie a lot more. Because the previous part of the script, I actually paused the movie and started to write it because I hated the movie so much. Though as I started to write about how this could be a show that isn't supposed to make sense, I enjoyed the second half of the movie a lot more. I'm not going to say it makes sense. In fact, it makes even less sense than the first half, but that confirms my suspicion that the show is about the feelings and emotions more than a logical story. And because of this, the story was able to culminate in love confessions during the final act of the play. The characters were singing out their hearts as the bizarre events continued to befall them, and each of these events added to the emotion of the scene. Then you got to the final arc of the movie, and that was able to build off of all this, showing the two characters come to finally be able to share their feelings with each other, even if they didn't really understand their own feelings, which all led to a very satisfying end. So, if you look at this as a really cool adventure building to a romance, then the movie does kind of work. But if you are expecting something that makes total sense, then, well, you'll be disappointed. And I feel that this is the biggest flaw with the show, with how it sets up the whole tone. Looking at the other absurd shows I mentioned, you know from the very beginning that they are ridiculous stories that won't follow rules of logic. Well, in this movie, the story is introduced as a mostly normal slice of life romance. So it fails to grab the viewer on the fun ride it wants to, or at least that's how it was for me. I do seem to be in the minority of people who had such issues with the movie, though in the end I did end up like. I also want to talk about the themes of the show because that's part of what allows the show to tie the random events together. The message of the movie is about embracing the opportunities that life gives us and appreciating the connections formed between people. Find this with the at times crazy college experience and the loneliness many may feel during college and the movie really does feel like a great expression of this time of life. I won't say that the themes completely excuse the parts of the movie that just did not make sense, but I can at least see how they fit the message. Animation wise, the movie is good. It is very similar to Tatami Galaxy, which is fitting since they are in a shared universe and a couple of characters show up here, though to be clear, you do not need to have seen Tatami Galaxy first to see this one. The style here does set the movie apart and it is able to use the style to deliver on some really cool moments near the end, especially how it takes a look into the main guy's mind. So, 
overall, I have to give Yuasa and his team the praise they deserve here. And this is actually the second time I started off not liking one of his works, wrote a review of it bashing it, and then went to watch the rest of it and came around to liking it by the end. While I will not say he's the greatest anime director ever, I do appreciate his unique way of doing things, and he brought us a great slice of life adventure, rule of cool, romance type thing. So, I give this show a score of a 6.75 out of 10 in a rating of... What rating do I want to give it? I have worth watching here, I'm not sure I like it all that much. And it is kind of slow, but it might be like my personal taste, and other people really like it. But I don't like it all that much, so I kind of do like it. So, we are going to go with a worth checking out rating. Don't know if I'm going to edit that rambling part out. Avi, you can have fun with that if you want. So, yeah. 6.75 out of 10 in a rating of worth checking out. Not great or amazing, nor does it slow me on the genius that is Yuasa, but it was still pretty fun, and if it sounds interesting, give it a try. So thank you for watching this review. Also, this video has been edited by my friend Abby, who has a channel, which I forget, but the uh, link will be somewhere on screen or in the description, hopefully, if I remember. And hopefully this is something that can happen more in the future, which will let me do more and bigger projects. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.